Maura, I was listening to you and Kalita, and that was a very transparent interview. Well, very well done, by the way. Kalita's style. Yeah, yeah. Transparent. But um, I'm thinking about abortion. Um, you know, for many years, I used to do a program called Talk to Me in the middle of the night that was seen mainly in the U.S. of A., at least for the first four and a half years, and then the last half year we brought it into Canada as well. From 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., we used to do a live TV show five nights a week. I was astonished at the number of Americans up in the middle of the night. Um, uh, Bell Telephone used to send us um, uh, invoices because we had a 1-800 number, and they would give me a record of everybody who called, and then they would give me a record of those who tried to call and couldn't get through. Many months it was over 100,000 calls a month. This was huge. I, I'm convinced that there must be about 30% of America up in the middle of the night. It's probably true of Canada too. Anyhow, once a year I would do a show on abortion. So for five years, I did five shows on abortion. And I, I would say, look, I'm not here to make any judgment. I'm not here to make any value statement. I just want to hear from those of you who've had abortions. Well, and of course, they can be anonymous. Yeah, of course, they were all anonymous. And, and, you know, it's a three-hour show every night. Three hours. Three hours. And I would listen to women who'd had abortions. And uh, time and time and time again, uh, they would say stuff like, his name was John, and he would have been 14 yesterday. Occasionally, I'd have men who would call. You know, I abandoned my girlfriend. I impregnated her and abandoned her. I forced her, or I, 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 I strongly encouraged her to get an abortion. I regret it. I've regretted it every day of my life. This is from guys. Now, here's, here's, here's how I see it. If men would be supportive of their women and commit to them for all of their life, you would cut abortions by four-fifths right away. Yet, generally speaking, you've got young girls who have become pregnant and uh, they're abandoned and they're afraid and they have nowhere to turn. And so, you know, and in many cases, they're quite young and immature. In the crisis, in the panic of the moment, they make this very poor judgment, this bad decision, and they live with it for the rest of their lives. Kalita sings about it even to this day. Mm -hmm. I really think that abortion is an issue that men should stand up for in terms of taking responsibility. I think that if men were men and they cared for their women and they committed to their women for life, abortion would not be an issue. And I know that it's easy to lay a finger of blame, I'm not doing that, but what I'm saying to the men is, no sex unless you're committed to that woman and show your commitment by marrying her before you have sex with her. It's the biblical plan, you know. Uh, no sex before marriage, no sex outside of marriage. Sex is to be celebrated within marriage and within marriage it is a terrific treasure. Something the Lord has made and he has blessed. Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled, the scripture says. Any sex before or outside of marriage just gives room for this horrible reality of abortion. This is why the Lord hates adultery. He hates it because it basically uh, undermines the integrity of the family unit. The Lord wants every child born to be family born. And if you've had an abortion and your heart condemns you, remember the scripture that says, even when your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart and knows everything. Maybe you need to call our prayer lines today and talk to someone about that abortion and pray with them. It's an opportunity perhaps you should not let pass this very moment. Give a call.